Hello, this is SumSub, a channel about how to survive in the online jungle. My name is Bradley, and today I'm going to tell you about how a love for rapping and Instagram destroyed a well-known group of cyber criminals who helped hackers from all over the world to launder money that was stolen from ordinary people. Now, we're going to delve into some fraudulent schemes that are described in FBI documents. Really cool stuff. So I'm going to introduce you to a guy called Maxim, and he's the lead character in the story. Now, he was actually born in Yamal Peninsula in Siberia, where winter not only lasts for eight months, but in summer, the average temperature is only about plus six. Now, understandably, Max had dreamed of Miami, money, and a rap career. So Max decided to focus on his hip-hop career, and took on the name Plin Official shortly thereafter. This is where it gets quite interesting. So on January the 19th of 2020, Plin Official was getting ready to release a new track. He actually flew to hang out in Miami. At customs, he declared $20,000 as being earned from Bitcoin investments and renting out real estate in Russia. This is nothing special. But the customs officers checked Max's photos on Instagram and found them kind of suspicious. So while he was hanging out in Miami, Don't be in you, baby. Cheers. <laughs> law enforcement officers started an investigation. So while this was all going on, the FBI special agent Samantha Shelnick got the permission from the court to access Maxime Boko's iCloud. Now the investigation team discovered that Maxime loved to take photos with banknotes, right? But some of them he kept as souvenirs and didn't actually post anywhere. The US District Court for the Western District of Pennsylvania published the testimony of Special Agent Shelnick and subsequently the arrest warrant for the rapper. Now, according to FBI agents, since 2015, Boyko had been helping criminals to cash out and launder money. Now, this let him live his fancy lifestyle as a rapper. Cheers. <laughs> Notably, he cooperated with a hacker's laundry named Quaz Group. Now, according to Europol, Quaz members are immigrants from places like Latvia, Georgia, Bulgaria, Romania, and Belgium. So they opened and maintained hundreds of corporate and personal bank accounts worldwide. So they did this to launder money basically from the cyber criminals who stole it in the first place from accounts around the world using malware. Now what's quite interesting is Quaz's hierarchy can actually reveal the inner structure of many different money laundering groups. So let's analyze it in more detail. The first thing we need to look at are the leaders. Now, these guys develop strategies for opening bank accounts all around the world. They advertise cash out services on cyber criminal internet forums and coordinate the laundering process of stolen funds from cyber criminals and mid-level managers. So this brings me on to the second rung, which are mid-level managers. These guys receive direction from the organization's leaders, but they're responsible for recruiting money couriers, often known as money mules, to open bank accounts around the world, right? They also arrange the travel for money mules. It's also worth mentioning that Maxim Boyko was also one of these mid-level managers. Right, let's talk about the final rung of this ladder, which are money mules. Now these guys at times use aliases and false identification documents, but other times they're actually using their real identities. Now they do this to register shell companies and open personal and corporate bank accounts on behalf of institutions such as Quaz. So what is a shell company? Well, a shell company is a sort of corporate entity that's created solely for the purpose of opening bank accounts. It doesn't really have any business function outside of being the named owner of these bank accounts. Quaz Group's cybercriminal clientele typically had access to groups of malware-infected computers. These were also known as botnets. You might have heard of that. Now, once a computer is infected with the malware, the cybercriminals can then capture the victim's online banking credentials. The cybercriminals then use those victims' credentials to log into the victim's bank account and initiate fraudulent wire transfers into accounts that are controlled by the subjects. In the US, these attacks were usually targeted at small companies and organizations, such as a synagogue in Brooklyn, for example. Who are the clients that are using these guys? Well, for example, there's a group of hackers called the Jabba Zeus Crew. Now, these guys use custom versions of the Zeus Trojan to steal tens, if not hundreds of millions of dollars from hacked small businesses across the United States. Now, this gang works directly with the author of the Zeus Trojan. His name was Evgeny, aka Slavik Bogachev. 
He's a Russian man with a $3 million bounty on his head from the FBI. The cyber criminal organization that Bogashev allegedly ran was responsible for the theft of more than $100 million from banks and businesses worldwide. Among Kwasi's other cyber criminal clientele were several nefarious malware organizations, including Gosnim, Drydex, and Trickbot. It's important to note that these forums provided virtual meeting places where vetted cyber criminals sought out and offered specialized technical skills, services, and products needed to engage in a variety of cyber criminal activities. So Quaz is in this environment and it advertises its cash out and money laundering services on exclusive underground, mainly Russian speaking online cyber criminal forums. These forums include things like Mazda and Verified, right? So in order to facilitate the sale and receipt of these services, the underground forums rented out advertisement space to individuals or groups that want to draw attention to their particular illegal service. But it's important to note that these advertisements on the darknet could cost as much as $10,000 a year. In one post, Quaz actually advertised themselves as a global complicit bank drop service. Now from this advertisement, we can see that there's an availability of bank accounts in numerous countries throughout the world with these drops or money mules who are complicit in and knowledgeable of the criminal scheme. So now let's take a look at how Quaz's service generally operated. Well, firstly, the cyber criminals with this unauthorized access to the victim's bank account, they'd look for a recipient bank to which the cyber criminal could send the victim stolen funds. Secondly, Quaz provided the cyber criminal with the details of the specific bank account designated to receive the stolen funds. Then, the cyber criminal initiates an electronic funds transfer from the victim's bank account to the recipient account. And then, if all goes to plan, Quaz receives the stolen funds in the recipient bank account. Now, Quaz withdraws the funds and transfers the funds to an illicit tumbling service. This is where the funds are usually converted into cryptocurrency, for instance. Now, finally, Quaz returns the stolen funds to the cyber criminal, minus their fee, obviously, which was typically between 40 and 50% of the total amount of stolen funds. So the following table lists examples of stolen funds from US victims that were sent to Quaz beneficiary bank accounts. As you can see, most of the attacks failed. Banks luckily noticed suspicious activity in time and managed to slow down or stop the transactions altogether. I mean, look here, they tried to transfer 49,000 to Portugal, failed. 84,900 to Spain, also failed. But once it actually partially worked, they managed to steal $64,082 out of a planned $121,360. Sometimes they stole everything, as in this case, uh, or that one. The FBI doesn't disclose the victims. It only indicates the company's type of activity. And when we look at the dates, you might notice that every month these cyber criminals are performing several attacks. The Quaz Group and its members managed to open and maintain hundreds of bank accounts at financial institutions around the world, including places like the United Kingdom, Portugal, Spain, Germany, the Netherlands, and so on. The FBI eventually got a court order together to assess the group's cloud storage, see what was there. Now, they actually got hold of the Google Drive for one of the participants. Now, this contained three folders, saved as BG, ES and PT. Now, these files all contained information that was related to Quaz's controlled shell companies and bank accounts that were located in, you guessed it, Bulgaria, Spain, and Portugal. So let's actually take a look at one of these folders. Let's open PT, which stands for Portugal. Now, this folder contains more than 30 subfolders, each designated by the name of a different Portuguese shell company. Portuguese authorities confirmed that these shell companies listed in the PT folder were actually registered in Portugal, and that these companies actually conducted no legitimate business whatsoever. So to further this conspiracy, Quaz members would actually transfer funds received from the cyber criminals to tumbling services, where the funds were converted to cryptocurrency through a series of transactions that were designed to obscure the original source of the funds. Okay, but what is a tumbling service? Well, Bitcoin tumbling or mixing is the process of using a third party service to break the connection between a Bitcoin address, sending coins, and the address that they are sent to. Now, this is a method of securing your privacy by mixing your Bitcoin with other people's coins or new coins. Since the Bitcoin blockchain is a public ledger that records every transaction, mixing coins is pretty critical for anyone who doesn't want the entire world to know where they're sending or storing their Bitcoin. More importantly, 
from where they receive it. So that's why Quaz chose this method to launder money and cover up tracks. So in the end, how were these guys caught? Well, catching the criminals was surprisingly simple. They were caught having made a lot of quite ridiculous mistakes, either because of stupidity or just purely out of laziness. So the investigation really boiled down to studying their social media accounts, linking phone numbers and emails and studying screenshots that had been made by the criminals. This all greatly facilitated the work of the FBI. Let's actually take a look at an example of officer work. Now, everyone knows that iCloud automatically saves photos from WhatsApp. This really helped the investigation. Now, while WhatsApp chats are traditionally encrypted, media sent between phones, such as videos, pictures, documents, and so on, they're not encrypted and therefore were stored in the cloud account. Now, this is where it gets really interesting because several folders contained screenshots of Jabber chats. Now, the images on this computer showed confirmations of Bitcoin transactions and similar information. Therefore, it's a probable cause to believe that the computer Max belongs to Maxime Boyko and that Boyko is using his laptop in the furtherance of money laundering activities. Well, in October of 2020, there was a large-scale special operation that took place with law enforcement officers from 17 countries. Now, this ultimately resulted in the detention of 20 people that were suspected of cooperating with this Quaz criminal group. Now, all of them are now facing long-term prison sentences. Law enforcement officers conducted more than 40 searches in total in places such as Latvia, Bulgaria, Great Britain, Spain, and Italy. And what's more, at that time, criminal investigations had already been initiated in the United States and Portugal. As for Maxim Boyko, well, he was detained in the United States in March of 2020. He pled not guilty, thereby refusing the plea deal. And this is actually a real case. I mean, can you believe that? Well, anyway, that's it for today. So be safe and I'll see you in the next video.